Good morning. I'm thankful uh, for uh, the skills that God has given the people at uh, St. Matthew's. I'm thankful to Sandy for uh, leading worship today in my absence, and I'm thankful for technology and Jim's ability to use that technology. Uh, even though I can't be there in the flesh, I can be there with my face and with my voice uh, with you here today. Although today is actually Saturday, I'm uh, recording this a day early to make sure that it gets done and is able to be uploaded. Uh, I'm feeling better today. Uh, this is the first day I felt better, better uh, since I came down with symptoms. Uh, I guess it was uh, Thursday. So I'm up and about. I think I might even go out on the deck. I'm tired of being cooped up in the bedroom in the master bath and not being able to see people, uh, see my own family. They're delivering things to the door like I'm some sort of a prisoner. But uh, we're trying to keep them safe too till I get over this. Uh, in our gospel lesson today, it comes from the gospel according to Luke. Starting with Luke chapter 9, uh, he records Jesus' travel, Jesus' journey to Jerusalem, where he's already told his disciples, his apostles, that he needs to go there in order to die on the cross. But during that journey, many there's many, many chapters of Luke, Luke recording Jesus' parables. He records more parables than any of the other gospel writers. And also, also many uh, miracles and many teachings. In today's gospel, Jesus is teaching also. But what is the lesson? We again hear a familiar story of Martha, the quote-unquote uh, busybody. Whoop, and I dropped my paper here. Quote-unquote busybody. And uh, Mary, who appears to be calm and relaxed. It says Jesus was invited into the home of Mary. That right there should raise some curiosity. We're in first century Middle East in the Roman Empire. And it refers to Mary's house. A woman is the homeowner. Could she be divorced? Well, probably not because if she was divorced, her husband would probably own the house. Uh, is she widowed? It's a possibility, although it never does say anything. It doesn't discount that. Or maybe she's unmarried. But either way, she seems to be a woman of some means, of some wealth. She's invited Jesus, and although it doesn't say, I'm going to assume that the, the, the apostles and many other, uh, other followers of Jesus are in the house too. It's got to be pretty big. Why do I say that? Well, we know that Martha gets upset because she's doing too much work by herself serving and certainly she wouldn't be flustered by just serving Jesus Lazarus her brother and Mary her sister there's got to be the rest of the crew the rest of Jesus crew that's got Martha kind of ticked off she's worried she's upset that Jesus doesn't care. She accuses Jesus of not caring. 
saying, doesn't this make you anxious, Jesus? That my sister, second accusation, my sister does, does nothing, is allowing me, forcing me to do all the work. Tell her to help me. Martha's distracted. She's carrying a burden. Actually, it's dragging a burden. Have you ever dragged a burden? You're busy doing something like vacuuming. Everyone else in the house is uh, just doing whatever they want. The longer this goes on, the heavier the load you get. The low, heavier the load is that you're dragging. You're not even thinking about the task you're doing. You're not even thinking about the vacuuming. All the anxiousness around you. The load you're carrying builds up. And it builds up until boom! Like a teapot. Steam escapes. And you take it out on others. That's what happened to Martha. She's in the kitchen preparing while everyone else is out in the other room hanging around Jesus. And she's mumbling to herself. I've got to do all this. Nobody else is helping me. She's not even thinking about what she's doing. She's thinking about the load she's dragging. Jesus tries to calm her. He says you should focus on one thing like Mary was. Mary was focused on Jesus' teaching. Mary, Martha's sister, was sitting at the feet of Jesus. To sit at the feet of Jesus is to learn to be taught. Paul in Acts 22.3 says that he sat at the feet of Gamaliel, the most respected rabbi, teaching rabbi at that time. Mary was sitting at the feet of the teacher, Jesus Christ. Often we look down at Martha, the busybody, but that's not entirely fair. I'll tell you a little family story that we kind of joke about. When we visit Lisa's family in northwest Iowa, her mother always has a little lunch ready for us. A little lunch means a plate of bars, brownies, a couple of different cakes, pieces cut in half, bite size, cookies, coffee, soda. And even if we tell her that we just finished lunch before we came, we still need a, to have a little lunch. Hospitality, serving is important to make your guests feel welcome. It's a virtue. It's the same thing in biblical times, but even more. For example, in our first reading, three guests from God, or some think God himself, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, come to visit Abram. And Abram provides them with hospitality. Well, actually, it's his wife, Sarah, that does that. But he provides Washing, washing off the dirt of their travels. Some food, some drink. A place to sit down and talk to get to know each other. And even on occasion, in those days, a place to stay overnight. Hospitality, serving, is very important. So Martha was really doing the right thing according to tradition. 
So what is it that Jesus is trying to teach her? I think he's trying to tell her there is a proper order of doing things. Going back to our visit of Lisa's family, after traveling eight to nine hours across beautiful Iowa, the most beautiful state in, un in the Union, maybe except for Nebraska or Kansas, we need to unpack our suitcases. We need to unwind a little bit. Then, then we'd be ready to settle in for a little lunch, to share some time, some family time. Jesus wasn't telling Martha that serving, that hospitality wasn't important. He was saying, don't put the cart before the horse. First things first. Mary was putting first things first. She was listening to Jesus teach. The word of God who became flesh, teaching the word of God. Certainly, Jesus is worth listening to first. The word of God leads you into serving, not the other way around. Charity, hospitality, service is good, but as Christians, our mission is to make God's name known, to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. I see it so much these days among many denominations that they reach out to serve, to help others, but never proclaim the word of God to those that they serve. Never proclaim the grace. Never say why they are serving, why they are reaching out in love. Service without the word of God is just a secular charity. We're just one more choice of help among all the rest. It's a shame. No other organization, no other charity has such a great message as we Christians have. To proclaim the word of life, to proclaim the word of grace, forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life to those we serve. Why not make the word of God the focus of our service of others? One last thing. I know all of you at St. Matthew's have such a wonderful servant heart. And many of you, if someone doesn't volunteer for something, you'll take on that task. You feel bad because it won't get done unless you volunteer. But maybe it won't get done because God hasn't spoken to someone or maybe because they're not listening. But if God hasn't spoken to anyone, including yourself, maybe it wasn't meant to be done. Maybe someone who designed that task didn't go to the word first, didn't pray about it first. But if you keep stepping forward when no one else does, no one will ever step forward. They'll continue to leave it to you and you'll be burned out. Put your horse in front of your cart. Pray, ask God where and if he's leading you in service. And listen for God to move your heart. Talk to a trusted friend about it. And after you both prayed, then God will make your service a blessing to others and a blessing to the furtherance of God's kingdom on earth. And you won't be dragging around that burden along behind you. Jesus is telling Martha and telling us, stop being busy with service, with serving alone. Come, sit at my feet. Listen to my word. 
the word that leads you to serving others. The word of God is the horse that pulls the cart of service, that cart which is loaded with God's love for others. God bless you, and I hope to see you in person next Sunday.